let me start by telling you a little bit about what is going to happen in this series. So uh, what we're going to study in this series is uh, common data structures that are used in various uh, computational problems. And you're also going to learn uh, how to implement these data structures in C++. And for most of them, you're going to see more than one way to uh, implement each data structure. Um, and um, this implementation, going through the implementation of these data structures, will give you a better insight on how the built-in data structures are created in each programming language and, and how they work. And we also talk about typical case uh, use cases that these data structures are used in practice. The implementations are going to be in C++, and I assume some familiarity with uh, basic uh, C++ notions. Uh, for more advanced uh, concepts in C++, I will give an explanation. Uh, for example, in our first lecture, uh, we are going to look at templates, which are going to be used a lot when we implement these different data structures. So let's start. Um, so uh, what is a template? When do we use it? Let me explain that with an example. So let's say I want to define a function that takes an array and prints the content of the array, the element of the array on the console. Okay, so I'm going to call that print array. And you know, it's going to be a void function because it does not need to return anything. So void print array. And the first parameter is going to be the array itself. Let's assume that it's an array of integers. So int, let's call that a. And then uh, you should know that in C++, whenever we pass an array to a function, we pass its size as a separate argument. So int size. Okay. Now, the implementation is very simple. There would be a loop that goes through the, the elements of the array one by one and then outputs them on the console. So I can use a for loop that says for int i equals zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. And then for each i, what we do is we output the array and index i, the element. And maybe we put some space between them. And then when we are done, maybe we want to go to the next one. That's it, right? And whenever I have an array of type integer, uh, I can call this function and it prints all the values of the console for me. Now, where does templates uh, you know, come, come into play? Imagine that I want to do the same thing, but instead of an array of integer, I have an array of a different type, let's say characters or an array of doubles uh, and so on. Okay. So for that purpose, what I need to do is I need to define a completely separate function. I'm going to call that print array two, where the only difference is going to be the type of the uh, first parameter is that int is a different type, let's say char a int size, and the rest is going to be verbatim the same thing. Same for loop and same see out the statement and so on and so forth. So identical. Right? So I have to define a separate function, but most of my code is just repeated. And if I want to do this, have this function print array for arrays of type double, then again, I have to define a third version of this function and so on. So you immediately see the redundancy that's going on here. Now, templates are going to be used to avoid this redundancy, okay? So what we do is, instead of specifically defining a function for an array of type int, and then another one for char, and then another one for double, and so on, what is used is a variable for these types that can be replaced by an actual type of int or char or double and so on. And that's basically how, uh, how we use templates, okay? So here's how you do that. So you start by saying that I'm going to have a variable for types. 
So I'm going to do a template, brackets, type name, T. So basically with this line of code, we are announcing that T is the name of a type or a variable for types. It's not a specific type like int or char or double, but it can be, right? Now we define the function void print array. And we say the name of the argument is A, it's an array, and its type, instead of putting in a, putting a concrete type like int or double here, I put T. And of course, the size is the same, it's an integer always, and then the implementation is going to be the same. But the point is, now I can use this same function to print the values in order of type integer, or character, or double, or a string, and so on. Okay, so T here is not a specific type, it's a variable for types. And then when I call this function print array, let's say on an array of integers, T will be replaced by int. So basically we get this function. And then when I call this function on an array of type, say char, T will be replaced by char. So basically I get this function. So I, I implement the function only once and then this T will be replaced, or the technical term for it is instantiated by an actual concrete type like int, string, char, and so on. Um, now I have prepared another example uh, of a function that uses templates, uh, but uh, let's go to Visual Studio and actually implement these functions. Okay. Here's my Visual Studio. So I'll start by including IO stream and then using standard namespace. Namespace. And the space and the main function always returns zero. Now, uh, for the function that I want to use, let me move this method down here. Okay, so void the print array function. Print. May I just first say template. Name T. We can use other variables instead of T as well. So the type of my array is T, and then its size is an integer. And then I have the for loop that outputs A as index I, and then M to go to the next line. Okay. Now we can test this function. So for example, if I have an array of that integer called a, which is two, three, four, one, then I can call print array on this array, a1 with the size four. And that will write two, three, four, one on the screen for me. And also if I have an array of a different type, like a2 is a the array of characters, let's say P, O, and E are the characters in this uh, array, then I can call print array again. Print array on A2, comma, and then the size this time is 3. And the function is able, the same function is able to handle both um, inputs, both arguments, the array of the integer and the array of the character. Again, when I call function here on line 17, uh, t will be instantiated or replaced by int. So we get a version of this function where t is int. And then when I call the function on a2, you get a version of this function that t is replaced by um, char. Okay, so let's run this, make sure that it works. And 
believe I need to stop share and share again to show you the console. Here it is, do you see two people, one and POE, right? Now, the other examples I had in mind um, to show you how templates are using functions is uh, a function for finding the maximum of two vectors, okay? So I'm gonna call this function my max, and this will start with two integers. So my max takes two integers A and B as its parameters, and it compares them and returns the one that is greater. Right, so if a is greater than b, then return a, otherwise return b. Very simple, right? So whichever is greater, return that, and both of them are integers, and the return type is also integer because it returns either a or b. Now, how can we generalize this so that it's able to compare not only integers, but say, um, floats or doubles or, or even characters, right? Again, it's the same uh, trick using templates. So template type name t, and then I say, okay, instead of fixing the type of my two parameters a and b to int, I can say their types is t. So both of them are values of type t, uh, where t can be any type but that you can compare its value. And obviously, when I do that, the return type should change to t as well. Uh, because the function either returns a or b, and both of them are values of type t, so the return type of the function is also t. Okay, so now I can use this function to compare two characters or two integers and so on. So I can do something like uh, compare um, the numbers 12 and 10 and return whichever is maximum, which is going to be 12. Or I can call the same function my max on two characters like uh, z comma r, and it compares them, no problem. And again, in the first call to my max, t will be replaced by int because the two values are have type int. In the second one, since I called them on uh, call the function on two characters, t will be replaced by char. Okay, so uh, there you have. Now, my final example for um, using templates is the following. Okay. Now, for this example, if you don't completely understand this, that's okay. If you have seen um, linked list before, this example should make sense. And if not, that's okay because uh, in the upcoming lectures, we have a couple of lectures talking only about linked list. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that the use of templates is not restricted to functions. There are many other applications as well. And, and actually it's a very powerful tool in C++. Uh, we are just now um, seeing a very basic uh, applications of it. And uh, so we saw it how it can be used to define generic functions, uh, functions that can work with inputs of different types. Now, in terms of structures, uh, my example is about linked lists. So um, a linked list is a sequence of nodes connected to each other. Each node contains, now this is the simplest kind of linked list, which is called a single linked list, but we will talk about that um, in, in much more detail later on. But the idea is that each node contains some data, let's say an integer at 14, and a pointer that points to the next node. And the next node itself contains some value and a pointer that points to the next node. Let's say seven, pointer, next node, 18, and in the final node, in the last node, the pointer is null, which means that it doesn't point to uh, the next node because there is no next one. And there is a special pointer that is usually called head that points to the first node. Now, why am I saying this? Uh, why am I um, talking about this now? 
If you look at the way that each one of these nodes is implemented, we can use a class or a struct uh, in C++. The name is node. And each node, as I said, contains two members, two member variables. One of them is the pointer that points to the next node. So it's going to be a node star pointer to uh, a node, another node. So this type is node star. And it's usually called next because it points to the next node. Now, in terms of the value that is stored at each node, uh, we can call that data, for example. And in this case, the type of the data is int. Okay, so this is how one of these uh, individual nodes is implemented is in C++. But again, it's the same story. Now, what if I want to create a linked list that um, contains um, characters or strings or objects of a different class and so on. So what I need to do is I need to repeat this definition and replace int with the new type, double, char, whatever, right? And again, you see the repetition and then the confusion that comes with it because then you have different implementations uh, you know, for each one of these uh, um, link lists and then you have to redefine all the member functions and all of that. And we can avoid all of this headache by using templates, okay? So similarly, I say template, type name, T, okay? So T is a variable for types now. And then when I do that, then I can talk about struct node. And then my pointer next is the same as before. But for, for my data, I can say the type of my data is just T. Okay, and then depending on how I create my linked list, T can be replaced with any type, like char or double or string, uh, or even some user-defined uh, type, like objects of a class that I define myself. But again, you see the use of templates, but this time instead of a function, it's in a class or in a structure.